Is it all down to burqas? Because again, you're not asking people in, with other traditions whether they care about the sight of people drinking alcohol well, or, or well, well, up well, in bikinis. You, well, again, well, it's a well, very we could, we could Western-centric viewpoint. I'm, I'm not, I have to say, you're, you're going to bark up the wrong tree if you think you're going to persuade a Brit that we should stop drinking alcohol because of people arriving in our country. I mean, that's not going to happen. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video from Douglas Murray titled... Britain should give up alcohol if it offends immigrants. Wow. I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. Dehumanizing refugees, thank you very much. And with this, let me go to you, uh, Douglas Murray. Because much of your uh, argument, Douglas, seems to be about the us versus them, the fact that, you know, we have our own values, our own Britishness, our own virtues, and they will come to our shores with their, their values, their traditions. You seem to almost suggest that they come to your countries with a lesser breed of values. No, I don't think I said that at any point, and that's another time you've tried to put something in my well, mouth. Um, so when you talk about the difference the in values, what do you suggest? Um, look, uh, uh, first of all, I didn't say that. I said that there are challenges, because we do know that there are challenges, and let, let's, let's just be frank about this. I mean, for instance, I, I've been in, in the Gulf for uh, the last week or so. Uh, I, I've, I see more burqas in my home city of London than I have seen in the Gulf in recent days, certainly here in Doha. Now, I can't say I'm delighted by the, the, the sight of more and more burqas in London. Do, do I feel any hatred of the people who wear them? Of course not. Of course not. But I, I can't say I'm elated by it. And definitely there are times I think, you know, what percentage of burqas in this area becomes like not that pleasant for everyone else. But again, is it all down to burqas? Because again, you're not asking people in, with other traditions whether they care about the sight of people drinking alcohol well, or, or well, well, up in bikinis. You, well, again, it's well, a well, very we could, we could Western-centric viewpoint. I'm, I'm not, I have to say, you're, you're going to bark up the wrong tree if you think you're going to persuade a Brit that we should stop drinking alcohol because of people arriving in our country. I mean, that's not going to happen. The, these things well, are all a bit of give and take. you bring your but, own but, traditions that don't quite fit with theirs. Well, they don't. Uh, yeah, there, there, are, there are, as I said, and before before we got all confrontational, which you did from the get-go, I said what the problem is here is that these things are all rubbing against each other. And in that situation, you have to work out what things you're willing to give up, which things you're willing to compromise on, and which ones you're not. You're not going to persuade the Brits to massively change their culture. But Thanks, Murray. Thank you very much. A few provocative thoughts, no doubt, that you mentioned there. A few jumped at me, such as when you said the developing world cannot move to the developed world. You seem to conveniently forget that the developed world moved to the developing world without asking permission. No, I don't. That, I it, don't. It, it seems to me as well that this is a particularly Western-centric view viewpoint and a misleading one at that, because you know as well as I do, and the figures show it, 85% of the world's refugees, in fact, settle in neighboring countries mm. in the Middle East, sure. in Africa, in Asia. They do not rush over to Europe. Sure. Uh, I, you'd make a big mistake if you think I hadn't heard of colonialism. Mm. Um, you don't and seem I to would address also, it in and any I'd way. also suggest, by the way, that it's, 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 it, I don't know how long we're going to go on about colonialism for. I'm happy to do it as long as you like. But, but let don't me just. We have to be factful, though. About well, don't we have to be but also don't careful think it, about that? Don't the think, if I may history. say so, that colonialism was just a Western thing. What was one of the largest and most significant empires in history but the Ottoman Empire? Do we say that Turkey has to do something like the West to deal with That's this? That's not the issue. You, well, are, you brought up colonialism. You, you are talking about the Western view that they should stay where they belong. I'm saying that it's, it seems to me to be much wiser that if you have a very large humanitarian crisis in, for instance, Syria, you try to make sure that people remain in the area. This isn't say all of them, but, they but it is more likely... I, I absolutely agree they, they do. do. I've I mean, seen look, it look firsthand. Look at what I'm suggesting... 3.5 million refugees. Look at Lebanon and Jordan per capita. What the I'm countries suggesting that have the most. to you is... In fact, in Lebanon, you've got one in every four person living in that country is absolutely. a Syrian refugee. Absolutely. So to suggest what... they're not doing very much is just being misleading, believe being me, dishonest. Believe me, I'm not being misleading. And I said from the outset that I agree with the point that most refugees remain in the area. And I said that I think that that's a good idea. I'm suggesting to you that I think it's better that people, for instance, fleeing Syria, end up in the countries around Syria in order to be able to return to their country than 
putting them in but Norway. But they will return. You are suggesting that they don't want to return. Who in their right mind, if they, they had the return. option, when did I say that? Here from a refugee, if they had the option to return, of course they'd want to return. I didn't say they wouldn't. They leave everything behind. But you seem to also be oblivious to another important fact that I just want to throw at you before we go to a video clip that I want to show you. It's what about the moral responsibility, though, of Western countries that have contributed to the destabilization of the region, the meddling, the military interventions, not to mm -hmm. mention the arms sales that continue as we speak. Mm -hmm. What about Do you that? Want me to answer that? Okay, I'll answer that one frankly. Uh, nobody denies, for instance, the disaster of Iraq, but who are the people who intervened most in it Syria? Isn't just hang on, hang on. Let me answer it. Who intervened most in Syria? It wasn't America, it wasn't Britain, it's Iran. Russia, it's among others countries, including the one we're in and others you're, you're around deflecting. the Gulf before, here. Before we got to Let's Syria, we had Iraq, we had Libya, we had many, many Countries in this neck of the woods were much more involved in the Syrian civil war than my country was. Well, you're also so do you want to take some responsibility for that? Do you think, want to take think, more refugees here can, in Qatar? Do you want to take more in the Gulf? Get to the other point that you make, and it's an important one, Douglas Murray. You suggest that we need to actually balance between two very important mm virtues, two important concepts mm. of mercy toward the refugee and justice toward your sure. own citizens. Let's take a quick look at this instance involving refugees. Do you think anyone for us? We are the Syrians, about 300 Yes, uh, I give you the number of Malta authority because you are near Malta. Hello? Yes. About 100 children and 100 women and, uh, and, one, and uh, maybe 100 men. Please hurry. Water is uh, coming into it. The boat is going down. We are dying. Yes, you, are, you are have dying. called Malta. You have called Malta. Don't throw us. You can run away. Call Malta. Please. Call I, Malta. I have no enough account on the mobile. If you cut, please. You yes. have my number now. You call me you, please. A very chilling video, though I don't suggest that you... Um, respond on behalf of the Coast Guard, the Italian Coast Guard. But again, it's that same issue of shifting the, the problem to others. And just for a little bit of context, in fact, this boat, which capsized five hours after this call, killing quite a few people on board, we heard that there were about 100 women, 100 children on board. Uh, that was twice as close to an Italian island as it was sure. to Malta. But again, this idea that, you know, we have to safeguard our values, where does mercy fit in that? Not just mercy, but the obligation, well, the legal obligations of states to I'd suggest, refugees. I'd suggest that we all make sure we don't shift responsibility. Uh, there is a responsibility to everyone. That would include the state we're standing in now, wouldn't it? It would include all the states in this region. It would include the brother states. It would include the Ummah. It would include everybody. It wouldn't just be the Italians. Now, the Italians, by the way, and I could, let me just finish uh, this that's point. That's a valid, the valid issue, but let me respond to it. Let me, because let me you finish the, the point. The, the because region, the Italians, it's a valid issue, but Italian, unlike the European countries, allow me to just make this point, unlike Another the point. European countries, I'll respond to two they, points, they are not parties to the 1951 Refugee Convention. So Conveniently. The obligations are, well, it's just a fact. Conveniently, isn't but it? But I'll let you carry on. It's but this means that countries that are signatories the refugee conventions get more blame and more assumption that they are going to have to hold more of the burden than countries that didn't. And I'm choice. suggesting to you that nobody should be, uh, should be able to absolve themselves from blame. But if you go to Italy now, and I don't know when you were last there, but it is not the case that this is going well in Italy, either for the migrants who are arriving or for the Italian population. But isn't it because you don't the resources see these are not being poured out. into this? Let's face it, the policies are not there, the resources aren't there. I, I see about the these people numbers. when they arrive, I follow their stories. They, they, this is not, it is not the case just that they don't you know, the, 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 local, the local populations in Italy have I've been to Lampedusa, I've seen the boats coming in. The local populations are extremely generous, they are extremely kind to the people. Most of the populations in Europe, let's just not have this idea that Europeans are somehow incredibly cold hearted. No, Countries no in Europe have that, taken in a lot of people and they are trying to deal with a very big problem very sure. swiftly. We're just putting the numbers in context, let me just mention sure. this very briefly. Three million people sought asylum in Europe between 2015 and 2016. That's mm -hmm. a fraction of the population of Europe, which is 508 sure. million. And so uh, Germany and Sweden took in 3% uh, of the population in one year alone. So they we're not talking about so negligible numbers, and no, you shouldn't pretend that we are. Not across the board, certainly. Douglas sure. Murray, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. What an interesting uh, interaction or an interesting conversation. You can tell the lady really triggered Douglas Murray. How can you ask someone to change uh, his, his country culture to suit immigrants? I don't think that's uh, the right thing to do. If you are an immigrant and you are coming into a country, 
you should be able to adjust yourself to uh, accommodate uh, the country's culture, to accommodate the country's tradition, to accommodate uh, the country's value system. Instead of uh, imposing your own culture, imposing your own religion, imposing your own uh, value on the people, which I believe is wrong. You can't tell a country uh, to change its culture, to change its tradition, to change its uh, value system in order to be able to adopt uh, your own culture, your own value system. I believe that is totally unacceptable, even uh, for the fact that the lady was able to uh, uh, say something like this, I believe uh, sh that I believe she's not being honest. Cause I don't think there will be any country in this planet Earth that will be willing to change its own culture uh, to suit immigrants' culture. I don't think that is allowed. If they are not okay uh, 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 with the con with the host country's culture, if they are not okay with the host country tradition, if they are not okay with the host country value system, they can as well go to a country that uh that you know that accept their culture that accept their value they accept their tradition believe me there are a lot of is there are a lot of muslim countries so if you feel the country you are coming to uh uh doesn't accept your culture doesn't uh, uh, their culture doesn't align with your culture their value system doesn't align with your value system then i think it's better you go live uh, in an Islam country, you go live in a Muslim country where their culture, their value system, their tradition align with your culture, align with your tradition, align with your value system. Instead of you telling uh, Britain to change their culture, to change, to change their culture in order to be able to align with your culture. I feel that is totally wrong. That is totally unacceptable. There is no way uh, the host country are going to change their country to they are going to change their culture their tradition their value to uh, align with immigrant uh, culture and value system i think that is not reasonable at all that is not even logical and i've really learned a lot just by uh, listening to uh, douglas murray and based on the answer he gave to all the questions he was asked we can even tell that the lady wasn't uh, was even interrupting Douglas Murray. wasn't giving him uh, the time to be able to answer the question she was asking, which I believe that is very rude of her. Because if you're asking someone a question, you should be able to allow the person give you uh, an answer to the uh, to the question instead of you interrupting the person while the person is answering the question. I feel that is totally that is totally wrong we all know britain promote free speech britain promote uh freedom of speech freedom of expression they promote multiculturalism but that doesn't mean immigrants should take advantage of that to impose their own culture on the on the locals which i believe that is totally wrong that is totally unacceptable and that is what douglas have stated in this video wow so i would like to hear your comments do you think Britain should change their culture to align with immigrant culture. Do you think that's the right thing to do? Keep the comments coming. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.